Today we're going to talk about something called a lawn ornament. You see, some people like to buy their lawn ornaments at yard sales, auctions, flea markets, consignment sales, and maybe even estate sales. But me, I like to buy my lawn ornaments about 1,700 miles away from home, and I proceed to drive them halfway across the country just to get back home. And that's all fine and dandy unless that lawn ornament doesn't have a working temperature gauge, in which case bad things can happen. And by bad things, I mean overheating. And by overheating, I mean this truck. And by this truck, I mean, I think she has a blown head gasket. This should be fun. Welcome to the Crank'em TV channel. Now you might be saying, but Crank'em TV, I thought this was a running driving unit. What happened? I thought you were driving around in the last video. And I was, but that was before the temperature gauge started working and I knew it was overheating. You see, when we were in Kansas, we were just cruising her down the highway to third gear or full pole, sending her down to Pennsylvania. And all of a sudden I said, man, this truck just does not feel like it's running right. And I pulled over and it was just shooting coolant out of the heater hoses, which was nice. Luckily, we made it home by putting a 160 thermostat in there, and I didn't really think anything of it until I pulled the dipstick on her, and I started seeing it was looking more and more like chocolate milk, which leads me to believe that we blew the head gasket in this old girl here. But before we even get into that, we have to see if she'll even start up, because she's been sitting in my yard for about five months now, and the only thing I've done is sat in it and cried and dreamed about driving her. So let's see if we can get this thing running right now. So let me just pop this air cleaner off and double check that there's not going to be like 95 vacuum leaks. We'll just shove that right in there. Uh, I believe there was one somewhere here. Did I cap it off? Oh, found my vacuum gauge here. Look at that. This was a good one, too. I don't know why I left it lay out there like that. Oh, well. All right, well, the vacuum gauge is plugging that vacuum port there, so we'll just wrap him around here just like that. You can sit in there between the brake lines. That's a nice spot for you. The choke on this carburetor is broken, so you have to manually choke her, but I'm thinking we might just use starting fluid, but we'll try with that at first. We're not going to cheat just yet. See if she fires up on natural gas just in case though just in case though we got just a little bit of starting fluid here you know we might we might really need her just if she doesn't want to fire up the natural way we gotta coax her along here we we'll just turn him to sponsor the video just a few spritz of that we should should probably get her going see what she does that I don't like that way that feels. Oh well, let's see what she does. Come on, old girl, you can do it. Well, she's trying. Oh, that might be why. We don't have the choke set on her. We'll give her just a tad of choke and then I'll have to run out here and send her off. You can do it, old girl. Tempting. I want to, but for for the subscribers that are out there, I won't use the starting fluid just yet. We'll give her more choke. That's full choke. That's probably all. we'll give her like 98% choke. See what that does. There should be fuel up to the carburetor by now. I'm thinking for cranking her, so we'll give her a few more pumps and see if that helps. Oh man! Oh, she wants to do it. She wants to live. <laughs> Maybe a little less choke. I'm thinking right about there should make her run. Let's try that. Oh boy. Come on. Stay alive. Stay alive. Stay alive. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You can do it. Come on. Yes. Where's... There we go. I forgot where the throttle is on this thing. All right. Heck yeah. Oh, oh no choke anymore. Oh my goodness, there's something freaking shooting my eyes over here. No. Six month cold start. That is pretty cool. Let's see if she does it again. She might need a little more chokage. There we go, I'll try that. All right, stay running, girl. Stay running. I'll moderate the choke in my hand here. There we go. And she's idling too by herself. Heck yeah, she's doing her. The old one barrel keeps her alive. I don't want to rev it too much since 
just started. It should be on a high, it'll probably like that. But oh my god, there's like stuff shooting everywhere here. Like I said, since uh that choke is broken, I think the high idle is affected by that too, so. Well, she seems to be idle and I'll take you around back and we can hear how she sounds. Oh yeah, coming out the pipes, the old inline six. Definitely could use a tune-up. And she's shooting black smoke there. So definitely probably running a bit rich and could use a tune-up. But other than that, there you have it. She is running. Five months not running at all. And here she is. Oh. Maybe accelerator pump shot. She wants to die every time I give her gas. But Well, before she overheats too much, let's get her in the garage because like I said, she does have that leaking head gasket and I'd prefer not to get too much cooling in my oil if we could do that, but look at that. Six, five, six month cold start there. Running not too terribly for needing a tune-up, I guess. Let's see if she'll move under her own power for the first time in five months. Man, I can't wait to drive this thing. Why don't you want to close the door? Oh, you can stay open for now. I'll figure it out later. Whoa! Okay, I need practice driving a manual, I guess. Oh. <laughs> tell you what she is not too happy about being driven i guess because the carburetor is all out of whack the clutch is super touchy way more touchy than i remember it so that might just be from sitting there the fact that i haven't drove it in a while and the brakes like as soon as you touch them they are they want to lock up pretty good so we're gonna have to go over all that pretty soon but i just have to had to keep tacking her up in order to even get her to move at all because she just wanted to die i'm guessing the accelerator pump in the car was probably shot but we'll figure out a way to get her in the garage there's very tight limited space in there so I might have to move some stuff around, but I'll take you guys in there once she's in. Well, after about an hour, we got her in the garage over here. There was a whole bunch of moss growing on her and stuff, so I did go over her with the pressure washer real quick, but I also gave her a bath in the previous video I did with this truck, so I figured you guys wouldn't want to see it twice. But anyway, now that she's in the garage, we can finally start working on this old girl after about five months of sitting outside. Like I said, she does have that head gasket leak, so the main goal for this video is to get that head off the truck, and I also do have a whole bunch of other parts that I want to install on the truck, so we're going to be putting those on too but I am going to be taking the head to a machine shop and I know some of you guys might be saying well why would you do that to a six cylinder just throw a V8 in there and go Wah! well to be honest with you I do want to do that but at the same time I really don't want to get into a motor swap this close to when I need the truck for winter because the only other vehicle I have besides this truck is my 79 Monty and she really won't do good in the snow being that she's rear wheel drive and I just don't want to expose her to the salt and all that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to get that head machine, get the head gasket put on her and if it turns out that the motor is like super tired or something that it's not going to make it through the winter, then we might hop on the old Facebook marketplace and pick up a small block Chevrolet for her. But for now, she's just going to stay with the little 250 inline six. But anyway, enough of me talking. Let's get to checking out what kind of parts I got for this old girl because I have a whole bunch of stuff sitting in the cab. I'm honestly surprised no one's come up and just 
taking a whole bunch of square body parts out of the cab because you can pretty much build a whole truck with what's in there. So let's check her out. So we have all the parts for the old girl laid out on the hood over here. And to be honest with you, I forgot I even bought some of this stuff because what I like to do is I like to buy my parts really, really far in advance. And then I just put them away somewhere and don't even open them up or look at them at all. So that way when it comes time to put them on whatever vehicle I'm working on and I find out that they're all wrong, there's not a single chance in the world that I can return a single one of the parts. And then I'm just stuck with them, meaning that I have to buy another vehicle that those parts fit. The first thing we got for here is the head gasket kit because obviously that's the biggest issue with the truck, you know, just dumping coolant in the oil. It's fun to see, you know, a milkshake once in a while, but just not from that. The next thing I got for are these here pushrod cover gaskets and this is what it's leaking out of and making it spew oil all over the place are the pushrod covers on the side of the inline six. So we'll have to get those slapped on too because, you know, it's probably best not to leak 80 gallons of oil every five miles. The rest of the stuff is just tune-up stuff like spark plug wires. We got a cap here, rotor over here, spark plugs here. And we also got a temperature gauge for her to make sure she doesn't overheat and break down and become a lawn ornament again. We got a tachometer for some extra horsepower there. Oh, come on, stay up there now. And we also have an electric fan controller and electric fan and fan shroud. So I'm not sure I have the fan shroud because I might be staying with a mechanical fan. I have the electric fan because... Well, it was cheap enough, and I figured if I want to go with electric fans, we have that option to do so, too. Oh, and we also can't forget about this year, chrome diff cover and diff cover gasket, because that's leaking in the back there, and I figured, you know, chrome always gets you home, so might as well slap that on there. Also found some heater hose in there, so we'll replace that, too, just as preventative maintenance, and some PB blaster, and a test light that I was missing, so I guess it's a good thing that I actually started working on this old girl. Well, it's a new day, as you can tell by my uh, fancier tire here. It was getting pretty late the other day, and I just didn't want to be working out here in the dark, but let's pick up right where we left off and get to drain the coolant out of this thing so we can pop that head off. So the pickock on the radiator here is right here, and it's right above the uh, power steering box, so that looks like it'll make a mess. We'll just reach down in there and turn it and see what happens here, if it'll turn. Probably not. Well, we got her to break free over here, as you can see, and the stuff coming out of there at first was literally just like pond water. It looked pretty dirty and had a bunch of stuff in it, but that's going a little bit too slow for me. So what I think we're going to do is come right over here to the lower radiator hose and... Oh, darn it. That is, uh, well, that's not too good. Let's see where that's going. Oh, most of it's going in the bucket. Look at that. Professional right there, YouTube certified boys. Heck yeah, look at that. So, I went ahead and got that upper radiator hose off too. And I just wanted to show you guys some of the cool on this thing. Let's make sure we get it in the bucket. But yeah, it's just like it almost looks like that Dex cool stuff that GM used in the 90s. But I think that's just rust actually. So, that might have been part of the overheating issue on this old girl. But we'll go ahead and get those heater hoses off. I wasn't gonna reuse these, but after seeing how in good a shape they are. You know, I might just have to let these stay on there for now. So we'll just get these four bolts off here, and I don't think I'm going to put this fan back on. I think I actually might use the old one off of my Monte Carlo, because that was a five-blade fan. This is only a three-blade, so that should draw more air, and especially now that I got a fan shroud for and should be keeping her nice and cool. Oh, Hall's there putting up a fight for us. Look at that little thing. How is that supposed to keep a motor cool? Three little blades. Oh, that looks like it's been on there since like the Civil War or something. Well, fast forward a little bit and all the front accessories are off except for the alternator because that can stay there since it just mounts to the side of the block there. The radiator's out and so are all the spark plug wires and the cap is also off here since it makes it easier to get the spark plug number two there. But it's a good thing I took the cap off because you can see some of those terminals are just completely corroded and inside too doesn't look the best. So we'll be putting a new cap on there so we can just throw him over there. But anyways, all we got left to do over here, I believe, is just take the carburetor off, the intake manifold and exhaust manifold, pop this valve cover off, and then we can get to looking inside the motor and seeing how she looks. And then we can finally undo all these head bolts around here and pop the old hat off and see if our head's destroyed, if we're missing a piston or, you know, anything of the sorts like that. Oh yeah, and look at this carburetor too. I was taking a fuel line off on the old monitor jet there, and as you can see, the whole thing just, uh... Yeah, it kind of shakes pretty good. So there seems to be a recurring theme with this truck, and that's that every single bolt is loose. And I guess the bolts for the carburetor are loose or something, too. On the tractor, it was that the wheel likes to break. And on this truck, I guess it just uh, has a bunch of loose bolts. So, you know, we'll have to take care of that in the near future. And by near future, I mean when it goes back on the truck. <laughs>
three centuries later, we got the two million pound intake and exhaust manifolds off here, as you can see. They actually came off pretty easy. The only part I got hung up on was on this little exhaust clamp thingy right here. It was kind of at an angle, so it was giving me a little bit of trouble. But other than that, it went pretty good. I would like to finish this up tonight, though, even though it's getting a little bit too dark to bring this head to the machine shop. I think we can still pop this valve cover off, pop that head off. And then tomorrow morning, there's a few more things I have to get buttoned up on the truck. So I'll do that, and then I'll take the head down to the machine shop and see how that goes. The nice thing about these squares are these engine bays are so big, especially with the inline six, you can just climb right on in there. And the last one back here. Oh, boy. Hmm. That does not look too good pretty black and a lot of just random stuff like paint definitely 168,000 miles maybe even more so i've actually never taken a head off or taken rockers off a motor before but the one thing i know they do say is to label all your rockers so that way you can put them back together with the corresponding cylinders and uh this little bench here that my brother or sister are made in wood shop happens to work perfectly for that, so hopefully they don't find out about this until after the video here. Just to show you how much grime is inside these things, you can see it's all black in there and whatnot, and uh, yeah, it just doesn't look too good, so we'll give these a nice clean before they go back on that motor there. I'll tell you what, Hoss, son. Oh, I've got to break out the old heavy duty equipment here. Alrighty, let's see how this thing works. Snap on USA, hoss. Oh. Man, what the heck did they use on these? Freaking green Loctite? Jeez. Oh, there we go. We got a little crack of lack out of her. Come on, Jim Beefus. These must be torqued to like 800 billion foot pounds. Oh, there we go. There we go. I think we're going to break them all free first, and then we'll come back around and, uh, you know, take them off fully. There's, like, nothing torque to spec at all in this truck. Like, this one was so easy to do, and that one just took, like, 3 million billion pound-feet of torque to break loose. See? Like, this one wasn't even tight. What the heck? Got to call up the old CEO of Chevrolet and say, hey there, Hollis, back in 1983, you should have been torquing your head bolts a little better there. This is done at beer 30 on a Friday over here. Well, folks, here she is, the moment you've all been waiting for. After hitting her a bunch of times with the mallet, she finally broke free, so let's take a gander inside this old motor here and see how the pistons look. So since this head's pretty heavy, I'm gonna have my sister come over and help me here take this unit off, because I don't really feel like dropping it and, you know, throwing it out the front of the grill there. All right, come here, Sophia. So what we're gonna do is, oh, oh, we're just like, Destroy the block now. Do you want to get that side? I'll get this side. Yeah, I just lift it up. All right, there we go. And she's going out. All right, uh, just put yeah, it, it put it down on the carpet there. Well, folks, there you have it. The cylinder head is off. Finally, after five months of this truck sitting in my yard being a lawn ornament, the cylinder head is finally off and sitting over there on the floor. The only thing that concerns me is that I didn't really see any cracks in this head gasket, so that either means that the head itself is cracked or potentially the block might be cracked i don't know i'm not really sure but we'll find out all that tomorrow at the machine shop but i'm just so happy that this thing's finally off here i've been waiting five months to start working on this truck and it's finally getting done just in case any of you guys wanted to see an up close to the cylinder head itself here there's what it looks like it's pretty dirty in there and uh yeah that's what happens when you don't change your oil guys so make sure you're not skipping intervals on oil changes otherwise uh the inside of your motor is going to start to look like that well, let's see where we're at here with the old girl. I think last time you guys saw me, I had just pulled the head off and I was about to take her down to the machine shop the next day. So that's actually where the head is right now. And if everything looks good, we should be getting her back within one or two weeks. So that's pretty good. We'll be able to get this old girl back on the road pretty soon. Other than that, we still have two more things left to do to this truck. One of which includes double checking that the rear axle ratio is right because the guy that I bought this truck from said that the old rear blew up and he said he replaced it with the rear out of another square body Chevy, which is all fine and dandy, but the only thing is when you replace a rear on a four-wheel drive vehicle, as most of you probably know, you have to double check and make sure your rear end ratio is the same. Otherwise, when you drop it down a little four by four, you're gonna have some grinding going on. So I just wanna take that diff cover off and probably a good idea to change the fluid in there anyway. And while we're at that, we'll double check that that rear end ratio is actually correct. It should be 373s, but 
you never know. So we just want to give that a double checker before we're, uh, you know, out there in the snow bags, dropping her down at four low, and all of a sudden my diff comes through my floorboard. Alrighty, so sorry if this is kind of a bad angle, but I have the heat on and the garage door is like right there and I really don't want to open up the garage door with all the heat out. So this is going to have to do. Let's see, hopefully they're 9 sixteenths, are you? Oh, of course, they're half inch. What the heck, let's get a half inch. Let's see what kind of milkshake we got going on in here. Yeah, it's really not that bad at all. I mean, it's not like brand new, but it's still brown. It doesn't look like there's a ton of water in the thing. Come here, a little differential. Let's see how you look. It actually doesn't look too bad in there. I mean, you can see it's not really looking like there's a ton of water in it. I mean, I've seen them where they're like milk, so. I don't know what like a mint diff is supposed to look like, but this one definitely does not look awful, in my opinion. I still want to count those teeth because just want to make sure I have not used the four-wheel drive since I've had this truck. I'm sure it's fine because the guy was driving it. I don't know why you would put a different axle ratio in the rear diff than up the front. But just to be safe and to be sure, we're going to count the teeth and make sure. I actually have to look up how to do that. I think you divide that number of teeth by this number or the other way around. But just to be sure, we're going to double check and I'll get back to you and tell you my findings in a little bit. Alrighty, so after doing some quick math here, it turns out that there's 11 teeth on that back gear back there, which is your pinion gear. And then there's 41 teeth on this gear right here, which is your ring gear. And when you do 41 divided by 11, that gives you 372.7, which rounds up to 373. So in the glove box, it says that this truck is 373s, meaning that if no one changed the front axle, it should have 373s in the front axle. And we now know for sure that it has 373s in the back axle. So we're all good to go. So now we get to the best part, which is scraping this gasket off. When I got these razor blades here for a thousand razor blades for 50 cents. So let's see how good these things are. They should be pretty good. Oh yeah, this half a penny razor blade works great. Alrighty guys, well it looks like we're gonna have to abandon the uh, chrome diff cover idea because apparently it doesn't fit. I got a chrome diff cover for a 10 bolt rear and this here, since the rear was swapped out, it actually happens to be a 12 bolt rear and I didn't know that until I went to put the diff cover on and she didn't fit. So let's slap this old girl on there. I already got a bead of silicone around her and we'll see how she does. Hopefully pretty good is the answer. beautiful hopefully now there's two different ways of doing this here some people say you should let the gasket maker tack over before you put it on there and other people say to just slap it on there right away so i'm kind of curious what you guys do do you want it to sit a little bit and then let it get kind of tacky or just lay that bead down and slap her on there let me know down in the comments which one you guys do because i'm genuinely curious which one there's more of well, since the shocks are pretty easy to change, I'm not really going to show too much of what I'm doing here. Plus, there's not really a good area to position the camera around here. So, I'm just going to zip them out real quick. There's one right here and then one over there. These are actually old air shocks that someone put in here to help lift her up a little bit while they had her on the fifth wheel hook up there. But, I'll just zip them out like I said. Then, I'll show you guys the brand new shocks in there. And then, I think we should be good to go. Well, guys, I wound up getting the rear shocks in here, as you can see, and they went in pretty easy, so that's why I figured no point in making you watch me take four bolts out over here, but other than that, I think all we have left to do back here is just fill the diff cover with fluid because I have to wait for the silicone to dry, so I'll just do that tomorrow, and then after that, I think we're pretty much done back here, so heck yeah. Well, guys, I think that's going to about wrap it up for today's video. I don't really want to make you guys watch a 13-hour long video, so... We'll cut her short here for today, but in the next video, we're going to still be digging into this old girl because there's a ton of stuff that has to get done to her before winter. If you like videos like this where I'm working on stuff, tearing stuff apart, tearing into a motor and things like that, don't forget to let me know down in the comments because I have a ton more project vehicles we can have on the channel if you guys like watching me work on stuff. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it a lot, and I'll see you next time right here on the Crank Up TV channel.